development plays an important part in the making of the United States Marine. Lieutenant Kai Church, Chaplain Corps, United States Navy, will deliver the graduation prayer. Ladies and gentlemen, please rise. Let us Marine. Precious God, we glorify your name. This is the day you have made that we proudly presented to you and our nation the 541 Marines of Company I. From this day forward, they are about to start a journey to become true disciples of our core values, honor, courage, and commitment. We pray that you will grant them motivation with understanding, determination with compassion, and the freedom with discipline, so that they will set examples for the old and the young in speech, in conduct, in love, in faith, and in purity. We also ask your blessings upon their families and friends. We are grateful for their selfless support. Eternal God, may your grace bring everybody together as one team, one mission, and one love for all. In your holy name we pray. Amen. Thank you. Please be seated. Take your post. Aye, sir. The commanding general, Murray Gorgor Depot, San Diego, welcomes you to what is a historical event in the life of a Marine. Their graduation from boot camp, approximately. The Marines have departed San Diego for service with units of the Marine Corps around the globe. The primary mission of the Recruit Depot is to provide basic training to recruits enlisted west of the Mississippi, which represents approximately 51% of all applicants in the Marine Corps each year. The Depot is also home to Recruiter School and Drill Instructor School. All of our efforts here are geared toward one end, producing America's finest fighting force, the United States Marine Corps. This morning, India Company, 3rd Recruit Training Battalion. Following the pass and review, the graduating Marines will return front and center of the reviewing for final dismissal. The staff for today's parade is comprised of Marines from the Recruit Training Regiment, 
the command of troops is First Sergeant Kelvin E. Carrington Jr. And the parade accident is Staff Sergeant Andrew Aguilera. The marching units are now being called to attention at the adjutant's command. Sound adjutant's call will begin today's parade.
The platoons are now being aligned from left to right in order to get them into their exact positions for the parade. Next portion of the ceremony will national anthem. We welcome veterans and members of the armed forces to join us in rendering appropriate honors with a military salute. For those who have not served in the military, it will they get it? and gentlemen, our national anthem. At the command, post the colors. The color guard moves into position within the parade. 
This signifies that the entirety of the parade has been formed and is ready to be presented to the command. Following the command, Parade Rest. The Parade Adjutant will give the command sound off, which signals the band to Parade Forward of the Assembled Marines while playing military marching music.
Parade Adjutant now presents the assembled command to the Commander of Troops. Center march. All unit commanders and guide on bearers march to the front and center of the formation. Historically, it was at this point that commanding officers would issue orders and instructions to the unit commanders. Following this, the unit leaders would face about, return to their units, and pass the information along to their Marines.
Throughout our nation's history, millions of men and women have earned the title United States Marine. Many who have helped shape our history join us here today. In keeping with the tradition of once a Marine, always a Marine, we would like to recognize them. At this time, those in the audience who have served as Marines, please rise. Ladies and gentlemen, a round of applause for their dedicated service to Corps and country. Thank you. Please be seated. Ladies and gentlemen, the battalion commander for 3rd Recruit Training Battalion, Lieutenant Colonel M. Matthew Phelps. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen, family and friends, distinguished guests. On behalf of the Commanding General of Marine Corps Retreat Depot San Diego in the Western Recruiting Region, Brigadier General James Ryans, and the Commanding Officer of the Recruit Training Regiment, Colonel Peter Rumler, it is my pleasure to welcome you to the graduation ceremony for Company I. It is also my distinct pleasure to welcome today's parade reviewing official, Sergeant Major Rupert Palmer of Headquarters Battalion, 1st Marine Division, whose impressive biography you will hear shortly. Sergeant Major, we're honored to have you with us today. Now before I talk about the remarkable young people that you came to see graduate, I'd like to acknowledge a few groups of people who made their success possible. First, let me recognize those impressive Marines you see wearing the distinctive green campaign covers. They are, of course, the legendary Marine Corps drill instructors. Drill instructors are the critical element in the transformation of civilians into United States Marines. From the very moment a recruiter arrives here, a drill instructor is with them 24 hours a day, seven days a week, everywhere that they go. It takes a special Marine to be a drill instructor, and they, these Marines are extraordinary. Their impact is permanent. Let's face it, of the thousands of people we meet in our lives, relatively few will leave a lasting impression. But no Marine will ever forget the name, the face, or that gentle, loving voice of their drill instructor. Seated next to the reviewing stand is another special group of people. These are the families of the officers and drill instructors of Company I. These families understand firsthand the time, dedication, and sacrifice that it takes to make Marines. They take on additional responsibilities at home so that their Marines can be here focused on the mission. We couldn't do this without their love and support. Please give a round of applause to the families of India Company. Next. Every one of these Marines' journeys began with one of the hard-working Marine Corps recruiters who canvassed the nation on their mission to enlist the next generation of Marines. Today, Marine Corps Recruiting Command was represented by Sergeant DeCorey Calloway of Recruiting Substation Beaumont, Texas, the recruiting substation where our honor graduate, Private First Class Jane Johnson, hails from. Recruiters like Sergeant Calloway are the first ones to recognize the Marines' potential for a civilian's potential to become a Marine and offer them the opportunity to earn the title. Sergeant Calloway, thanks for being here this morning. And finally, while most of recruit training happens right here on the depot, recruits spend several weeks up with the talented instructors at Weapons and Field Training Battalion on Edson Range, Camp Pendleton. There they learn essential combat skills, including marksmanship training, where they learn to deliver precision rifle fire on targets at staggering distances up to 500 yards out. Representing Weapons and Field Training Battalion today is Corporal Caden Smith, the primary marksmanship instructor for Platoon 3214, our platoon with the highest shooting average. Corporal Smith, congratulations, thanks for being here this morning. Now let me talk about the incredible people in the formation behind me. They are truly some of the best this nation has to offer. When they arrived here, they were young and fit, 18 years old on average, and in better shape than most people their age. All of them were graduates of high school, and 13 of them had already earned college degrees. But beyond that, they demonstrated a courage and commitment that few of their peers could muster when they raised their right hand and swore a solemn oath to support and defend the Constitution of the United States. 
They come from every corner of the globe. In this case, 12 different countries as far away as the Republic of the Philippines, the United Kingdom, China, Nigeria, and some came from right across the street here in San Diego. But wherever they came from, there was a common goal that brought them together, the goal of becoming United States Marines. Three months ago, these young people embarked and joined the most demanding entry-level training system when they stepped off the buses and onto our historic yellow footprints. Since then, they've been continually tested. They've been trained and evaluated in the attributes that make Marines unique in the world. We've trained them in battlefield test and war fighting skills so that when their nation calls, they'll be ready for the fight. We've hardened them by developing their physical and mental toughness so that they'll never quit or give up against any odds. We've indoctrinated them in our core values of honor, courage, and commitment so that they'll be Marines of exemplary character in peace or at war. And we've instilled in them a bias for intelligent action so that as small unit leaders, they'll be able to decide, act, and communicate in the future operating environment in any time or place. I hope when you're reunited with your Marine, you see a few changes. They should stand a little taller, look a little leaner. They'll look you in the eye, and they'll use strange phrases like, yes sir, and yes ma'am. You won't have to tell them to clean up after themselves or finish a meal, and I promise you, they know how to make their best. But behind those things is what I'm most proud of, and their courage in coming here, through blood, sweat, and tears, through physical, mental, emotional, and character transformation, they have fully committed themselves to serving our court, and I am honored to serve alongside them. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm proud to present to you 542 young people who can now and forever claim the title United States Marine. Excuse me for a moment while I address the company one last time. Good morning, Marines! Good morning, Marines! Good morning, Marines! You hear that? That is pure pride. Now, in India Company, I know when you arrived here several months ago, the furthest thing from your mind was graduation. More likely, you were thinking, what in the world have I gotten myself into, and how do I get them to stop yelling at me? But here you stand today, having accomplished something most young people would never dare attempt. When you get home this weekend on your well-deserved leave, people will be proud of you, as they should be. They'll look up to you. They'll be impressed and amazed at your transformation. Your friends will ask you how you did it. And when they ask you, I want you to take them for a walk right on down to your recruiter's office. Your drill instructors would love to meet your friends. The world is a dangerous and chaotic place, and that's why we have you. Remember that the strength of our Corps doesn't come from any weapon system or piece of equipment. It comes from the warfighting spirit of individual Marines working together as a team. At its essence, war is a violent conflict of wills, of spirit. And so it is your spirit, your character, that matters most. Our Corps' legacy of being first to fight and never giving up now rests with you for safekeeping. The Eagle Globe and Anchor that we handed you atop the Reaper as you finished the Crucible represents that legacy. And for as long as you wear it, you represent the entire history of our Marine Corps and every Marine who came before you. Be proud of yourselves. Be proud of what you've accomplished. As you go forward in your lives and your careers, be worthy of the title you've earned. On behalf of the officers, drill instructors, and all the support personnel here at Marine Corps Recruit Depot San Diego, let me be the first to wish you fair winds and following seas. Semper Fidelis and congratulations, Marines. Welcome to our Corps. Now taking their position in the reviewing area is today's parade reviewing official, Sergeant Major Rupert K. Palmer, Command Senior Enlisted Leader, 1st Marine Division, Camp Pendleton, California. He is accompanied by Sergeant Major Jason N. Wilson, Sergeant Major Support Battalion, Mowbray Corps Recruit Depot, San Diego.
Sergeant Major Palmer enlisted in the Delay Entry Program in February of 1998. In July of 1998, Sergeant Major Palmer graduated from recruit training at Marine Corps Recruit Depot, Paris Island, South Carolina. Shortly after graduation from Marine Combat Training, he reported to Fort Leonardwood, Missouri, where he attended Primary Military Occupational Specialty School and was assigned the MOS 3531 Motor Vehicle Operator. He has served in a variety of challenging billets in numerous commands to include Motor Vehicle Operator, Operations Chief, Regimental Commander's Driver, and Road Nurse at various units within 2nd Marine Division, 3rd Marine Air Wing, 3rd Marine Expeditionary Force Information Group, and 3rd Marine Logistics Group. Drill Instructor, Senior Drill Instructor, and Platoon Commander at Company H, 2nd Recruit Training Battalion, Marine Corps Recruit Depot, Paris Island. Sergeant Instructor, Company Gunnery Sergeant at Officers Candidate School, Wire Cove, Virginia. Assistant Marine Officer Instructor at the University of Southern California. Unit Senior Enlisted Leader at Company L and Company M, 3rd Recruit Training Battalion, Company N and Company B, 4th Recruit Training Battalion and Headquarters Company, Headquarters and Service Battalion. His deployments for training and operational experience include Battle Griffin, CAX, ITX at 29 Palms, 22nd Marine Expeditionary Unit, Operation Iraqi Freedom, Operation Enduring Freedom, and Korea Marine Exchange Program. Sergeant Major Palmer currently serves as the Command Senior Enlisted Leader at Headquarters Battalion, 1st Marine Division. Sergeant Major Palmer's personal awards include the Meritorious Service Medal with two gold stars, the Navy and Marine Corps Combination Medal with two gold stars, the Navy and Marine Corps Achievement Medal with two gold stars, and the Outstanding Volunteer Service Medal. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Sergeant Major Rupert K. Palmer. Commander of you. Aye, aye, sir. And, and, review. And, hey. The pass and review is a tradition within all military units, allowing the unit commander to formally inspect the unit under their charge. Desert Shield and Desert Storm and fought to liberate the country from Iraqi forces. 
Fallujah. The Marine Soprano, the city, within 24 hours to commence Operation Vigilant Resolve and take out the city and Al-Qaeda forces. Marjah. The Marines work with Afghan, British, Canadian, Danish, and Estonian forces in order to remove Taliban forces from the last stronghold in the Helvon province. Even now, Marines are stationed worldwide to answer the call when they are needed. This parade has has had many legendary Marines march across it, and they have never forgotten the feeling of earning their place among our ranks. Ladies and gentlemen, as the national flag passes directly in front of you, please rise. Once it passes, you may be seated.
your honor, and ladies and gentlemen, you all encouraged to join. See the words of the first verse as Marie Dan San Diego performs Anchors Away, followed by the Marie Tan. Will the guests please rise? And gentlemen, at this time, we would like to introduce to you the Marines responsible for ensuring the success of the difficult transition required to become a Marine. The company commander is Captain Thomas C. McCarthy. The company first sergeant is First Sergeant Kelvin E. Carrington, Jr. Ladies and gentlemen, please join me in a round of applause for the company staff of India Company.
The next portion of the ceremony will be the traditional function of retiring the guide arms. presented a flag by the battalion commander, Lieutenant Colonel M. Matthew Phelps, and the battalion Sergeant Major, Sergeant Major Vitaly I. Holodon. Ladies and gentlemen, please hold your applause until all honor graduates have been recognized. Present arms! Order arms! Graduate for Platoon 3209, and the series honor graduate is Private First Class Brandon R. Dwyer from Oconomowoc, Wisconsin. The honor graduate for Platoon 3210 is Private First Class Jordan I. Dunaway from Decatur, Illinois. The honor graduate for Platoon 3211 is Private First Class Anthony Morales from Chicago, Illinois.
The undergraduate for Platoon 3,213 is by the first class Isabella A. Martinez from Santa Cruz, California. The honor graduate for Platoon 3,214 is by the first class Brody M. Freeman from Claremore, Oklahoma. The honor graduate for Platoon 3,215 and the company honor graduate is Private First Class Jaden M. Johnson from Salesby, Texas. Private First Class Johnson is also the recipient of the Jesse Fuller Award for his outstanding meritorious performance while in recruit training. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, the honor graduates of India Company. reporting in his order. First Sergeant will now give the command to the senior drill instructors to dismiss their platoons. Needless to say, this will be the most welcome command they have received throughout recruit training. Senior drill instructors, dismiss your platoons!